I guess you're all familiar with how the Trim Paths modifier works in After Effects shape layers. You set a start and end trimming factor and then just play with the offset amount. When the trimmed section reaches the end, it reappears at the other end and this goes on and on. This is what we'll recreate in geometry nodes. It will be way cooler because you're not limited to just two dimensions. This is Blender we're talking about. I assure you it will come handy in all sorts of projects. I used this technique as the basis for effects like this or this other one. Keep watching and if you like the video, share the knowledge. All splines, whatever their type, fall in two categories, cyclic and non-cyclic. Our tool will work with both, it will handle each case in a slightly different way. Let's start with the easier one, the cyclic type. I'm using a circle here, but any cyclic curve will do, including all character types. Add a reroute node, group it and rename this group Trim Loop. Tab inside and resample the spline using the Evaluated mode. In case of Bezier curves, this will convert every interpolated point into real geometry, returning a polygonal type curve. Add a Trim Curves node, keep the Factor mode on. We will control the trimming factor with Time, divide Time in seconds by 2 and add a Fraction node. This will return a value from 0 to 1 every 2 seconds. That's the speed of our trimming tool. Let's create a custom input for the time interval, call it speed. As for the end factor, add something to the start value, our fraction result, append yet another fraction node to it and feed this one to the end input. Create a custom input for this value too call it length. Hit play and there you have it, a looping trim tool. This setup will work great with cyclic curves, but open-ended ones will need some more tweaking. I've replaced the input curve with an arc of half a circle. Hit play and you can see for yourself that this doesn't work. Imagine a straight lined curve. This is the trimmed segment. Now we sweep this segment along the curve in a repeating time interval. You will notice that during a small part of that interval the segment will disappear completely and leave all the curve uncovered. This will break the illusion of a loop. The solution to this is to add a second curve segment traveling with the same speed but offset one unit from the first one. This weight will appear at the start of the curve when the first segment disappears at the other end, thus giving the illusion of a loop. Let's implement this in our case. Duplicate the current frame with all its nodes. Rename this frame non-cyclic. Delete the fraction node from the end input. To add a second segment, add a new trim curve node. To offset it in time, subtract one from the time interval and feed the result to the start input. As for the end value, it will be a segment length away from the start value. Use a geometry to instance node to join both branches and hit play to see the result. Now how do we combine both frames so this node group works with any type of curve we feed it? Easy you might say. We use a switch node. That would work in most cases but not this time. You see, Unfortunately, the switch input only accepts a single boolean value. But if we use this node group on a bunch of curves, we will have to check the cyclic status for all of them at the same time using an isSplineCyclic node. This will return a field of values and connecting that result to the switch input will give an error, as we can see from the red line. Instead, we will chain both frames together and make each one active only when the incoming curve type matches the corresponding criteria type. Drag the cyclic frame and position it to the right of the non-cyclic one, thus chaining both setups. Feed an isSplineCyclic node to the selection input. 
Now this trim curve node will only work with cyclic curves. Repeat the same step for the other two trim curve nodes, only this time we want it to become active if the incoming curves are not cyclic. Insert a not boolean node. Finally connect the last geometry stream to the group output. And that's basically all the functionality of the looping trim tool in After Effects shape layers. Join the circle curve together with the arc and feed them to our setup. Hit play and feel proud for what you've achieved. A fully working loopable trimming tool. But because we're in Blender we can push things further. In this other example I've created a 10 second time counter by rounding time in seconds, moduling it by 10, converting the value to string and feeding the result to a string to curves node. Instance the result on the points of a vertical line, set the z value to 0 0.01. This way we create an extruded version of the outlines. Insert our node group and hit play. You can surely see that it's working but all the segments run at the same step. To make their offset vary, first realize all the curves generated from the string to curves node. Then tab inside the node group and add some random value to time which is driving the trimming speed. Hit play and tweak the minimum and maximum value to your liking. Now why does this work? According to the Blender manual, the random value is based on the ID value. By default the ID is equal to the index number, in this case the spline index, because the node gets its context from the geometry operator it is connected to. The trim curve affects splines, that's why the random numbers are based of the spline index. Remember to add the same random value to time for the non-cyclic frame. In this other example, I'm using the same setup on a strip of line splines to prove that it works on open splines as well. Let's make the speed vary, multiply the interval value by some random number between 0 and 1.5. Hit play and observe the lines move at different speeds. You can push this even further by storing a random attribute for coloring each spline differently in the shader editor. Ask any question in the comment section and don't hesitate to share the knowledge.